Well guys, it's been a little while, probably a little too long. So before we actually dive into some of the other stuff here, I just kind of wanted to show you what we've been working on at the shop. We got our day-to-day -day work, we got all sorts of other problems and stuff that we have to solve on a regular basis. So, but this one right here behind me. All right, so we got this customer that has a whole bunch of Bear Jackson cars and this is one of them. This thing's a 572 big block with a Kinsler injection system on it. It's pretty nasty here. She's a little dirty right now, but it is a 58 vet and uh, man, it made a boatload of torque. I want to say it made like 680 wheel torque though. Pretty freaking rowdy. My diesel truck. This thing kind of took a big old dump and uh, yeah, it's been, uh, Old Faithful is not faithful anymore. So we got that thing torn apart. We got our day-to-day -day work that we're doing here. Uh, you know, doing bolt-on packages on some cars like CTSVs and lower cars and other things like that. Kind of like these guys out here. We got Uncle Sam. It's been a long time since this has been on. Absolutely love this thing. I've been taking this thing out next door, actually over at Showtime. So literally right over there, about two blocks, is Showtime Speedway, and it has been so much fun. You know, drifting really is like a like a drug habit, and it really costs a tremendous amount of money. It wouldn't be possible without no tires. But I uh, wanted to do some service on the injectors. We're getting ready to go for this event this weekend, so I really just want to make sure that everything is right. And honestly, uh, so we have a lot of methanol on this and it runs pretty much specifically on 85. We did make a thousand wheel horsepower with this thing. And usually when I'm, you know, doing some drifting and all that, I turn it down just a little bit, but, and of course, Laz is Jeep here. We're gonna do a bit more coverage on this a little bit later. He has made it a lot farther, but it is still not yet complete. Uh, got his engine sitting over there, but it's not in, but yeah, it is some tedious work. And this thing really does have an awesome stance. So he's getting on it little by little. I don't even really remember where we left off on this thing. We kind of just shelved it when uh, you know, things went a little sideways and uh, you know, we had to get back to regular, back to real life, you know, yeah. I guess. But honestly, we haven't even pulled the cover off this thing in a long time, but let's take a look at it and see where it's at. Something that we're gonna touch on a little later is that, uh, that ram air that my dad did years and years and years and years ago. We've been looking for helmets. Actually, you know what? <laughs> we have always been looking for helmets and I didn't realize that. Oh my gosh, there's two in there. Right. So yeah, I think Matt was working on some stuff. I don't remember what, did we even get that totally? Yeah, so he's all wired up on the injectors. I think we had a couple of sensors, crank position sensor and stuff that we had to get in. I remembered we had ordered a distributor replacement. I actually honestly forgot about the LS1 throttle body on that. That's pretty cool. I do remember that we, no, you, after now a while. <laughs> well, I mean, I, I remember doing it, but I honestly, if we were to pop the hood, I wouldn't have remembered that it was even in there. And yeah, the worst part's when we put the dash back in. Yeah, that is gonna be something. You know, it doesn't really pay to be able to do this. It is very, very expensive to work on your own stuff and then pay other people to do it if you're not generating the revenue, so kind of just shelved and we're most of the way through the process and honestly I would like to see it through it's just it has to be absolutely worth it in order to be able to do it yeah over somewhere else I'd seen the exhaust that we had done and kind of reminded me of uh, the dyno tune that we had done you know as far as changing out the exhaust gaining power incrementally and all that honestly that was really really cool because somewhere over there I think over by the uh, plasma cutter I think we got the exhaust that we had done for this and I was just, I actually was looking over there, I think it was yesterday, the day before, I was sitting in the car like right over there and I was like looking over and I was like, man, we picked up like eight horsepower by going to the Magnaflow exhaust over the Flowmaster. So like, that was really, really cool. But, you know, hadn't really thought about it since then. So I'm sure there's gonna be more things that we go through and kind of realize, but I know that we had gotten this shifter so that we could be able to use that with the 6L80. And I think we have the trans is in it, it's just not, I think the trans is in, I think the cross number's done. We actually got a converter too from uh, Circle D. And do we have a drive shaft in this yet, do you remember? I don't, I don't remember. Maybe we did, but let's go check. At least you see that Dietchworks fuel system, that was awesome too. We had a failing unit way back when, a couple years ago. Let's go take a look at the other side. But the, uh, the Dietchworks made an awesome upgrade over the uh, fuel system that we had in there a long time ago. Yeah, unfortunately, it's a little too low to be able to see under there and see if we got the drive shaft in there. But we know we got our workout cut out for us, and uh, it's just one of those things we may get to it, we may not. It's uh, it's it's always here, and 
you know, it helps me understand how project cars can sit for years at a time. But in the meantime, we gotta be able to pay the bills, but uh, that brings us to something else that we wanted to do. It was really a touch on what my father had done on this cold air. As we can see on this car right here, my father had a, a ram air system. So on the front side was a license plate and uh, it has a duct that is going to feed the cold air on this one. Well, we actually have a really, really nice 96 Grand Sport. I almost never tune these things. I really try not to tune these things, but it was kind of a, a favor for a friend. And uh, the car is really, really nice. I did dyno tune it, but we're actually gonna tackle that today. I thought this would be something that would be really, really cool to cover because I probably did this job maybe 20 something years ago when I was, man, that, I mean, my C4 was my first hot rod and I think I did it, yeah, when I was like 18 or 19 years old. Probably over the summer trying to copy what my dad had done. We're gonna try and get this thing to, to breathe a lot better because they have an inherently bad problem with cold air with these. So yeah, it seems pretty near stock, and uh, but what we've done is uh, Les already cut open the cold air box right there. We de-screened the math. Um, actually, I needed to clean the math on, on something that gets to be this old. They get a lot of buildup and it started to read inaccurately. So cleaning the math on something that has gotten a lot older can actually give you a lot more fuel. It might be leaning it out. And uh, I did learn that uh, many, many years ago, but most certainly put it into practice most recently a day ago when I dyno tuned this. Basically, these things get about 140 degree air temperature. It's absolutely horrible for the overall performance. And you about know, 140 today though. It feels like it a little bit, doesn't it? But yeah. But let's make some power. I'm gonna cut this thing apart. Memory serves me right. We got this, then we got to cut through the bumper, and then we've got this corrugated plastic that's basically like well, what would be the bumper in another vehicle? I don't think we can see that in any way here, but we will find out. Then you have this really thick fiberglass that we're gonna have to cut through. And I thought we were gonna have to go through the steel frame back there, but we're probably not gonna do that. And just kind of shape it probably what my dad's is like now. And then basically that thing, when it opens up, it has this kind of V taper in the center and then we'll have the sides. So maybe we'll end up shaping it kind of like an M, but maybe do that out of some, uh, so maybe it's plastic. You know, Les, you've gotten grumpier as you've gotten older, but you haven't gotten dumber. That's pretty neat. Closest thing that came to hand. Honestly, I was just thinking about how are we gonna radius the license plate like that? And I think that that is the solution. Anything you can use for a template to match it. So we're gonna try and do this so we have two options. This could be kind of race mode, and if he wants to putz around on the street, we'll maybe make it a little smaller, very similar to like what my dad did as well. Maybe just leave this guy probably, I don't know, maybe that's gonna be about two inches, but this all opened up, that looks probably about four and a half. So many years back, my father had somebody else that was kind of a competitor of his that also did tuning. It was up in New York, his name is Bill Smith, and he had a really, really fast C4 as well. And they both kind of talked about doing that Ram Air deal. I don't remember who was who it helped out the other one and uh, kind of saw, hey, so they're doing this little Ram Air modification with the air box and all that. You know, one thing led to another. I think Bill was telling me he tried it out and he picked up like two or three tenths in the quarter by doing it. We need all the advantages that we can get down here in Florida. It will absolutely help out at speed. different than mine that I had done many many years ago and uh, you know mine had like a corrugated kind of honeycomb deal in there obviously that as was an early C4 right? it was it was so this is a little bit different but again this is something that you can do on whatever car if you can do this like we do this uh, basically on our uh, everybody's here hey, Hi. hey. I mean, we do something like this on the uh, CTSVs we do it on the C7s we try and do something 
yeah, I mean, everything is like on the, on the C7s, we stick a little um, NACA duct down up in here and it funnels a bunch of air up into the air box, which resides over there. All this stuff is incremental. It all really does help. So, you know, dude, on my uh, C5, I'm a huge fan of the Bear Ram. That was actually an awesome unit. I, I saw you could do one. like a C5 Bear Ram and use these lights. Yeah, yeah, you could. Um, on the uh, on my C5, I had a decent cold air on there, and then I stuck the bare ram on there, which is basically a, a real ram air, and it does utilize the, the front lights there. And I didn't really see anything up until about 80 miles an hour, but at 80 miles an hour... You got better fuel mileage, right? Right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but no, I only saw one horsepower in the dyno, and I didn't expect to see that, but I knew when the time I hit third gear, it was going to be a lot better, and it was absolutely awesome. Or we're trying to do something like that with this. Yeah. Next part we have to address though. I think we need to pull the upside back apart, pull the adduction off, see what we had to work with. So if you look at this, we can see everything, but I'm wondering if that like cross brace is the same on this car. Yeah, this one has the radiator laid down, so it's a little different than yeah, on that one. Yeah, so take a look at the orientation of the radiator there. We're straight here, this one's straight up. So yeah, we'll be able to hopefully have a little bit more space. That's what we got to work with. That's, that that that's the same looking beam cut out. Yeah, that that has. That bracket definitely does appear to be the same, but I don't know. Maybe you can kind of sharpie and drill the, some holes or something. I've got the long quarter inch drill bit too. We can put some in the corners and just see where they're at. There you go. You that? Yeah, it's basically touching the bottom of the metal bracket right there. I'm redoing that previous one. All right, so it's like a, it's kind of our scatter plot of where we are and uh, just where everything's gonna fit. I do want to probably take these brackets out or these little support brackets, but uh, yeah, more is better and you know, too much is just right. All right, got a little Sharpie to fiberglass right there. Got a idea of kind of how we want to shape that. And we're gonna try and have maybe a little bit of a, uh, I mean, we're, like I said, we're gonna try and maybe cover it with some ABS plastic. I think that that would probably. Uh, I'm thinking about what to cover my arms with a hot, sweaty day in fiberglass. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely gonna be nasty. Yeah, I was actually thinking about that last night. I was like, you know, I got some. Actually, you know what? I can get you a faster prompt shirt and just cover your arms with it while you do it, you know? All right, well, here we go. First piece we cut out. I didn't really like the rhino on the bottom too much, so I cut it in half, flipped it around, and traced it. Yeah, traced it onto that side. Okay. So it had the same angle. All right. Now I'm trying to make it my perfect zone cut. It's all right. I think we're gonna be just fine. So yeah, basically, what do you think? Straight edge attach in there or maybe we need to put the air box back in there and see if it pushes it forward yeah Let's see where it falls in there. as you can see Laz got that thing cut up a little bit uh there is a little spot here. yeah good idea it actually goes through i think if we want to build something up there i think we kind of want to go above that that is the air box right there you can see it with a little piece of velcro on there so there is that uh part that goes up but again we have our ceiling. I think we're just gonna enclose that. I'm not gonna try and over engineer it too much. If we stick the air where we want it to be, it's gonna hit the air box. I think it'll be so pretty nice. So. We want to panel off across here, panel. Yeah, I think if we, uh... so you're wanting to bridge this area basically from here to here? I think so. Cover. Pretty much basically here to yeah. bottom side area, flat line right there. Okay. We'll see what you come up with. That all the way across and up the sides. Yeah, I think so. All right, time to make some templates. Yeah, some uh, some CAD engineering. CAD. We haven't yeah, done that in a while, man. So I was gonna build some sort of temp template out of cardboard, and of course that's cardboard aided design. Uh, we gave last about 30 minutes here, and uh, yeah, it's got a nice little thing going right there. So we just talked about how we're gonna probably break that up into three pieces. This will be one piece two and then three not going to worry about anything on the top it's pretty well done um, but yeah i think we're gonna be able to 
have a clever way of how we're gonna fasten it. Maybe just put a, two little bolts on either side or something yeah. like that. And we'll see what the finished product looks like, but uh, that is really exactly what we're hoping for. And I love the way that that transitions up. Now you just gotta cut the fancy painted piece. Yeah, I'm gonna leave that to you. I think, <laughs> I think your hand's more steady. So yeah, while well, I was doing the other part right there, I did round this off. I used that nice little radius trick that he had there. You like that? I'm very pleased with the way that that should turn out. All right, that's the cleanup right there. Well, Laz, proud of his uh, creation, and that looks awesome. Yeah, that Maybe looks that good, be man. Better, but... It's really pretty darn good, man. Honestly, so, dude, put it back on, in. On the side, tell you about it. Oh, yeah. What were you saying about the sides? All of your lights, I guess. So on the sides here, that was the styrofoam on the sides, but I've got like two inch long, like Christmas tree style push pins oh, that yeah. go into the styrofoam. And then these side panels are riveted both here and then up in the top there. Yeah, that's that's nice. And it goes right into the bottom of the air box right there. You can almost see where the filter is right there, but not quite, but Heck yeah, that'll make a giant difference in this. One of the main problems with the C4s are the fact that it's just, it gets like 140 degree air temperatures. We're trying to keep it as close to ambient as possible. And usually the, the power kind of works out about 1.1, 1.2% power for every 10 degrees ambient air temperature that you drop. So this thing needs all the help it can get. And heck, at 300 wheel horsepower, we're talking about a very substantial amount of power for just opening that air box up. Well guys, first of all, I wanted to say thank you so much for your support with all of you guys that have been out like, hey, you need to get back to doing YouTube. We appreciate you, we need you and all that stuff. It has not gone unheard and I wanted to say thank you, thank you, thank you so much, very much. So guys, I hope that we'll be able to get back to uh, working on the legend sometime soon here. It is gonna be a little bit costly, so bear with me, but I have so many other cool projects that have been going through. And it's been a while since I've done this, so I'm gonna be a little bit rusty here with it. So usually we have a little segment where there's like a little word of wisdom or something like that. And, uh, and some sort of song that I recommend. Really, really, really been digging uh, Seven Nation Army by the Glitch Mob, not actually the White Stripes. So check that out. That, absolutely uh i think it actually outdoes the, the original version right there a little little something that i've kind of been uh that i've kind of found over the years is the fact that when i make decisions by myself uh without without seeking god with that decision uh, a lot of times it ends up going the wrong way so when i make decisions by myself it's uh it's definitely a lot of times the wrong decision it's just something i kind of wanted to pass on to you guys um just want to say god bless you guys thank you so very much for watching We'll see you on the next video. Come on, Pete. Keep going, keep going.